How is it going everybody? You're watching Then About Tech and in this video I'm going to show you the best, most important and most relevant iOS 18 new features. What you actually want to know. First, I'm going to show you what's new in iOS 18 that you can actually use now today for everyone that has updated to iOS 18. And then I'm gonna talk about Apple Intelligence. So all of the new features of Apple Intelligence and when this will actually be available to everyone. We have to start talking about the new Control Center, which was redesigned and has a lot of new features and possibilities. As you can see, I've already customized my Control Center a little bit, and if you wanna do that, it's super easy. All you have to do is tap and hold on any blank area, as you can see right here, and then we can adjust pretty much anything. So we can easily go ahead, for example, and readjust the size of any widget. So you can tap on the handle, the grabber right here, and then just readjust it and then it's super easy to do as you guys can see right here so make it smaller or larger and of course you can remove any of those little teeny tiny widgets and buttons and controls and create and add new ones if you want to add just tap here on add a control and as you can see we've got pretty much endless options by default on those very first days of ios 18 we're pretty much just gonna have here the apple stock controls from apple settings and apple native applications but naturally as days go by we will have possibilities here from third-party developers and third party apps as well so very very nice on this very first option you can swipe up right here and then you're good to go on top of that as you can see we have pages so as you slide up you will have different pages the second one is for media the third one will be for your controls and of course you can have multiple pages right here if you add even more controls so if you tap and hold and you add any more control here since as you can see we are full on this first page it will automatically create a second page so that's awesome as well. And of course, you can easily navigate through those pages just by sliding right here. So very, very nice. And last but not least, we have a dedicated power button. And if we tap on it, it'll do nothing. And that's on purpose. We have to actually tap and hold so we can get here the slide to power off. We have new features, changes, and improvements in the home screen as well. So first, if you tap and hold on any icon, any app, and you move it, for example, to this very blank page and leave it right here in the middle, it'll stay there. So as you can see, it won't automatically go ahead and align right here at the top. You can freely leave any app at your desired location. On top of that, you can actually hold on one, as you can see, and with the other finger or with your other hand, you can tap on other icons, other apps, and then have them as a stack. So as you move to another page, for example, you can leave them right here, let's say, and then they'll stay there as well. So cool. Just like the control center, we can also edit our home screen by tapping and holding on any blank area. So if I tap and hold here, we enter jiggly mode. So we tap on edit at the top left and then customize and we have a few options. First, we can set our theme on our home screen to light, which is the current option, to dark, so everything becomes darker, from the wallpaper to the apps themselves, as you can see, they became darker as well, which is so, so nice. We can set to automatic, so it'll depend on the time of the day, and of course, tinted. So this is a possibility where you can actually choose the exact color of your apps. And I think this works better if you have more of a solid, subtle color on your wallpaper, like my option. Otherwise, it will get a little bit weird. But as you can see, we can adjust here the color and do whatever you want, which is nice if you like this kind of customization. And of course, here the tone as well and how bright or how dark that color is. This is a very cool option as well. And you can even tap on this icon right here and choose the exact color you want based on your wallpaper. So if you want this color, for example, your apps will get that very same color. Since I don't really like this, I'm gonna come back to light. And there's one last possibility here, which is tapping on this sun icon. And as you can see, just the wallpaper will become darker, not the apps, 
just the wallpaper so that's cool and also you can tap on small or large to adjust the size of your icons of your apps themselves and as you can see when we set to large we lose the names I also want to show you the possibility to lock and hide any application from your home screen as you can see we have the possibility to require face ID so as you tap on it and this will work for any application on your home screen you have the possibility to just require face ID so every time you tap on the app to open Open, it'll ask for a face ID or even more you can hide and require so you can tap here make it invisible so let me authenticate with my face as you can see and then hide app and as you can see Instagram is gone it'll be right here in the last page in our app library right down here at the bottom as you can see on hidden it won't even show you have to tap there and then use your face once again and then Instagram will be available to use and one final customization that I really like is the fact that if you have a widget, you can tap and hold on it and you can easily adjust it and adjust its size just like we saw on the control center. So we can make it a little bit larger and then it'll go and it'll adjust and we can make it super large as well or we can just tap and hold anywhere as you can see and easily use the grabber to just make it the way we want speaking about customization we have a new option here on the lock screen that i really really like so on the lock screen tap to wake and then use your face and then tap and hold and as you can see right now as we tap on customize lock screen we have the possibility to finally choose what we want here as our lock screen widgets our lock screen shortcuts for the specific actions so it used to be locked to flashlight and camera now we can just go ahead and remove it if you don't want to and then remove it all together or tap on it and then of course choose any of the controls you just saw in the control center like for example the calculator if you use that a lot and then you tap on done and as you can see tap on it and you always have the calculator super handy and we actually have another way of activating those awesome controls if you go to settings and scroll a bit down and tap on action button this will only be available for the iPhone 15 series and 16 and you slide until you find controls as you tap on choose a control you get those very same controls that you can open them activate them super easily with the action button right here now we have to talk about the new photos app and this is a little bit controversial because a lot of people didn't really like it and I'm one of them as you can see here's the home page of your photos app as you swipe down right you have access to all of your library your whole photo library with all of your items so all of your photos all of your videos you can choose to see all months years and so on you can tap here on the sorting option and you can see all your possibilities once you're done you can tap here on the x and then you come back to the very first home page and then you have here a few options as you can see we have recent days so you see like today yesterday sunday and so on you you also have people and pets so you see right here the people you have selected on your photo so that's very very nice you can scroll down here and see your pin collections so your favorites recently say maps and so on your memories as well you can move on and tap here for trips and then feature photos and then of course your usual media types and utilities so as you can see this is how Apple decided to implement photos right here in iOS 18 so it's a huge feed and then you go scrolling 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 and you have all of the possibilities sliding to the right I didn't really like it, but that's the way it is. Now let's talk about the new Messages app with awesome new functionalities. First, we have the possibility to tap back with any emoji. So not just those standard ones. Now we can slide to the right and have access to everything. All of the emojis you have right here as your emoji. So that's really, really nice because you have the possibility to tap and hold and for example, laugh like that which is nice now let me show you a new feature called send later so let's say i want to send good morning but only tomorrow not right now all i have to do is go ahead and tap on the plus button more and then tap here on send later and as you can see i can schedule this text to tomorrow let's say it's 7 a.m as i hit send this message will be right here waiting for the correct time to be sent 
to the person I've selected. We have also have a new option which is to animate our messages with those awesome little effects. So as you can see, I can tap on shake and then my hello starts shaking. You can tap on nod, small, big and so on and as I send the message, the other person will see that text with the effect. And last but not least, we have to talk about RCS messaging. It's finally here in iOS 18, meaning I can send text messages, of course, I can send tapbacks, photos, videos in full quality to Android users, and they will be able to see it just like the way I'm seeing, even with red receipts. But keep in mind that if you're texting an Android user, their messages will not be gray, they will be green. Now we have to talk about the new calculator app, which doesn't seem new at all, but it is. So let's say, for example, I'm typing something and I've made a mistake. I can tap here on this option to delete just the last digit and then I can correct it. That's very nice. On top of that, we have this new button and as we tap on it, we can make your calculator scientific, as you can see right here, but also we have math notes, which is so, so nice because now we can actually tap on plus and we can simply draw. Like for example, if I tap on this button, I can go for two plus two equals, and then it's gonna say four. So that's very, very nice. And it's even gonna replicate my little handwriting. So cool. And it doesn't end there. If we tap again on the calculator icon and we tap on convert, we have the possibility to convert anything straight from our calculator. Tap here on the unit, as you can see, and then we can choose anything. So we can convert speed, pressure, temperature, time, time, volume, and so on. You choose what you want, and then it's gonna convert it automatically, even currency. I also wanna show you the new dedicated passwords app, which instead of living in the settings, now it has a dedicated application. As you can see, you can check all of your passwords, you can check your pass keys, your codes, and even your Wi-Fi passwords as well, which will be very easy to share with other people. Okay, that's all great, but I'm sure all of you guys are wondering about Apple intelligence. Where's Apple intelligence? How come I can't see it on my iPhone? Because I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking this. How come I've updated my iPhone to iOS 18 and I don't see Apple intelligence? Well, there are actually two things you have to keep in mind. Number one, you have to have a compatible iPhone. So you either have an iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max or an iPhone 16 series. That's it. Those are the only devices compatible with Apple intelligence. And number two, you have to be running iOS 18.1. So as I go to general, and about, you'll see that I'm currently running iOS 18.1. That's why I do have Apple intelligence on my iPhone and most people don't, simply because iOS 18.0 does not enable Apple intelligence, only iOS 18.1. That's why most people aren't seeing it. And right now, I'm gonna briefly show you the features that will be available in iOS 18.1 when that's available as well and that I'm already using on my iPhone right here. Let me show you. So first, of course, the new Siri. As we tap and hold here on the side button, we have the new Siri with the new Apple intelligence animation, which is so cool. We also have the new writing tool. So as we tap here, we can easily proofread, rewrite, make it more friendly, professional, concise, and so on, just like ChatGPT. We also have notification summary. So Apple intelligence will actually organize and summarize our notifications. We also have the new cleanup tool in our photos. So as I tap here on cleanup, and then it's gonna load very quickly and then I can just choose the object or person I wanna remove. It's gonna analyze that and boom, remove it. We also have the possibility to record phone calls. So as you can see, this call will be recorded and then, wait a second, it's recording. That's so cool. And last but not least, if we pull down on the control center and tap and hold on our focus modes, we can enable reduce interruption, which is a custom focus modes made by Apple intelligence, which will choose which contacts can talk to you, which notifications can go through, which phone calls will ring and so on. And so that's it. Those are the most important, most relevant and coolest new features of iOS 18, separating by those that are already available in iOS 18.0 and those that will come alongside iOS 18.1 for compatible devices just with Apple intelligence. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one as usual. Bye bye guys.